Well, hey there, I'm Dr. Tom Ulrich, and I like to talk about leadership and engineering, but I also like to talk about Arduino. Hey, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about Arduino, and I'm going to talk about creating a state machine for controlling a fan that we made with the components from our Arduino kit. And this fan is uh, controlled by the remote infrared remote control, and so this is going to be the state machine that's kind of the logic that puts... Uh, the whole thing together. So by the end of this lecture, you ought to be able to go off and, and implement um, your state machine. Now, a quick note, your state machine does not need to be identical to mine. Um, you can make it as you see fit, but when I grade it, what I'm looking for is that your, your definition of your state machine and your code are tightly, you know, it's easy to see the correlation. All right, so first of all, let's take a look at the uh, some of the constants I create. So I, I'm thinking there ought to be uh, four states. So I'm going to use a state called off, a state called low, a state called medium, and a state called high. And uh, along with this, I think we ought to, well, I specified in the homework that we need to use seven buttons, at least, at least seven buttons. So we need to be able to use the power button, uh, the up arrow, the down arrow, the zero, one, two, and three and here's how I define those constants. Now here's an overall look at the state machine. Now if you can't read that I know I'm going to zoom them in on subsequent slides but what you'll see first of all is remember when you do a state machine you can do it diagrammatically like we did early in the semester but you can also just simply do it uh, as a table and so in this table column one is the state the, the state you come into the function with Column two is the condition. So if that condition's true, then you move on to the action. There is an implication here of priority. So if row one and row two are both true, you do row one first. Um, so column three says what action takes, and column four says what's the new state. All right, so zooming in on fan off, uh, what we see is I've got uh, five um, cases here and uh, the first one is so if the fan is off and you push the um, power button it ought to come back on and notice the new state is last on state so I've got a variable called last on state which remembers what it was previously so the whole idea is if you were in three and you hit power and you hit power again you come back to three See? Now, if that's not true, then if you hit the, the up button, well, then we're just going to go from low. So the logic there is off is state zero. So up means go one up, which will get you to low. If you hit the one button, it'll just go right to state, you know, to the equivalent of hitting, uh, well, going right to state um, the low speed. Hitting two will go to the medium speed, and hitting three will go to the high speed. Now, on the next slide here, I've got, uh, if you're already going at the low speed, then if you push the power button, what happens is you go to the off. But this is a very important part of logic. Note for the action, we set last on state as fan low. And so the idea here is we were in low. Let's remember that. So when we come out of power, we go back to the same place. And you'll see the analogous thing for states, you know, for, for medium and high. So you hit power, you go to off. If you hit the down button, you go to off. Now we're still going to do last on state because going from one to zero, you're no longer on. And when you hit power, you want to go back to where you were and where, the last time you were on. And of course, if you just hit the zero button, it's the exact same logic. Now, if you're in state one, the low, and you hit up, you expect to go to state two, which is medium. And uh, if you hit button two, you're just going to jump to two. And if you hit uh, and in hitting two, you're going to go to medium. And if you hit the three, you're just going to go to um, the high. Now, if you're in the medium state, what happens is, is you'll start to see the symmetry here. If you hit the power button, you're going to go to off, but in the last on state, you're going to remember that you were last in medium. Then, uh, if you hit button zero, you're just going to go, it's going to be the exact same function. Remember that I was medium and go to off. Now, if you're in medium and you hit down arrow, you're just going to go to low. And if you're in medium and you hit button one, you're just going to go to low. And if you're in medium and you hit button up, you're going to go to high. 
and if you're in medium and you hit the three you're going to go to high. Now if you're in high what's going to happen is if you hit power it's the same sort of feature we're going to record that we were last in high and go to off if you hit a zero it's the exact same thing record that you were last in high and then go to off if you hit a button one just jump to low if you hit button down just go to medium and if you hit button two just go to medium um, now you'll notice also on the last one here I've got the unknown state and the idea here is if for some reason you know, the wheels are falling off, or somehow you get a crazy state. This just recovers to um, fan off, and it also, very importantly here, you know, it sets the last on state to low because we don't want to come out of power and use that and go to some crazy state. And since we don't really know where we were, we're just going to play it safe and set it to low. And notice this is the power on condition where maybe we don't know where we're at, so we just um, come up to unknown. All right, so that's sort of the logic. Now what I want to do is talk about how we're going to actually code this. And, you know, with me always, you know, the big deal is first and foremost, with the state machine, make it readable. Um, you know, one thing at Tandem Diabetes Care, um, our code has an outstanding reputation in the industry. You know, we just don't have a lot of the bugs that a lot of the other med dev companies do. And one of the reasons is for all the, the first decade when I was responsible for all the medical device software at Tandem, I mean, I was just um, enthusiastic about enforcing this idea that we define things with state machines and we make the code absolutely match the state machine. And then a wide variety of people can sort of play along and say, wait, wait, that logic's not right because we may know how to code it, but we don't always know you know the right action system wise and so you have to make your logic very very visible to the rest of the organization so everybody can play along. At any rate so uh, you know I showed you those slides here they are uh, my constants I'm going to use pound define this time of course in C there's a lot of ways you could have done it we could have done it with an integer or a constant integer or could have done it with an enum because this class does not presume that you've had a lot of programming I'm doing what I think is the most straightforward one which is um, you know just pound define but feel free to do that any way you like um, and then we've also got uh, the speeds here and what we do is you know when you're in state zero we're going to use the RP or the, the command to write to the PWM defined there at line 70 which is zero for you know off now, for 71, 72, and 73, you may notice there's some very disappointingly low uh, values. The fan will turn, but it won't turn very hard, and you really got to kind of squint to see the difference. So look at the comment I have in 65. Um, Josh first found this, where um, if you have this, the motor going at a fairly high speed, um, what can happen is the IR sensor sometimes stops working and it seems to degrade in two ways. In some cases you push a button and you simply won't see the LED on the sensor work at all. And in other cases you can see it blink but you can tell it's shorter than it normally is. And um, I think this would be a fairly thing, fairly easy thing to debug. It's not clear to me if it's an issue with noise from the motor. Josh is thinking it's backflow from the 2N2222. Um, you know, and it could be some other issue too. There's some, some issue. And to debug this with an oscilloscope, I mean, this is a 15-minute job. Without an oscilloscope, it's pretty much impossible. And... We have COVID-19 coronavirus. We can't get to the oscilloscope. So I can't debug it right now. I'm pretty confident that if I had the scope, I could solve this. And like I say, it's a 15-minute thing, but I don't have the tools. So, mm. so what I got here is a workaround. And what, I, what I've what i seen is two things. Note there in line 69, you know, I said in the lecture on how to put this together, use a 1K resistor. I would use a 2K resistor. That's going to get toward the um, the backflow theory of Josh's. Uh, I did try with 10K, and that's just too little current to drive the transistor and our Arduino kits. Um, you know, they come with 2K and 10K. I don't think they come with 5K. If I, so, if they do, try that. Um, I don't think they do. If you do have a 5 I mean, you could always, you know, put two, couple 2Ks in series and see if that works. At any rate, um, 
the other thing is that um, I, I just simply use lower speeds. I've noticed that the motor's going slower. Um, you don't seem to have this problem. Uh, Josh was recommending that instead of having the power supply module at 5, you put it at 3.3. Um, that's going to do what that's going to do is cause there to be a lower voltage using lower numbers is going to cause there to be a lower voltage you can do it either way this is how I'm doing it hey knock yourself out and it may be when you make the video to, to show this thing off you know I, I know it may be hard to see the difference you can you know you can listen and we'll just you know do the best you can at any rate, um, for the IR remote, now remember in that lecture what I did is um, I said, you know, you got to figure out some of these buttons. Uh, here's a couple of them here. I'm not going to show you buttons well, one, two, and three. I mean, come on, that's part of the homework. I want you to go through that process. So you'll have to figure those out. But you see, this is how I set them up. Um, you know, lines 34 through and then down, set up the buttons. These are the numbers that the IR sensor returns when you use this um, uh, approach like I showed in the previous lecture and you'll notice at line 30 and 31 you know that's how you in, uh, instantiate this this class for this um, uh, file the library file that we include all right so in terms of the code structure then um, here's the state machine starting at line 214 well I mean that's a comment line 222 is where it starts so we've got a function it takes an integer as an input button it returns the state as an integer and um, at line 226 and 227 we see two very important variables one called fan state and one called last on state and uh, what the deal here is, you got to make sure that you have that word static there. Now, I'm going to repeat myself a couple times. you got to have static. What this is, if you don't put the word static, these variables are going to get blown up each, you know, each time you exit the function. The data is gone. By saying static, the data remains. And so what this will do is this will initialize the fan state to fan off, which is what we want. And it will initialize the, the last on state to low. Then at line 229, we're going to use a switch, and then for that switch, we're going to have a bunch of cases, and then I'm going to have where it says state machine code goes here. I'm going to, in subsequent slides, I'm going to show you all those details. At line 315 is the end, and basically what that is is, um, you know, if we get in some crazy state, we're just going to set the fan state to fan off, and we're going to set the last on state to fan low. Uh, and then we close that out and then we return the fan status. So here we don't have the fan state as a global. We just have it as, as local here, but we made it static. So line 226 and 227, we're going to have the word static. This thing will not work if you don't have those. All right, so looking at the, the low code, here's the state machine again zoomed in. And what you can see is, boy, it's easy to look at that table and look at the code, and it's very easy to follow. Now, you'll notice what I did is... In the examples we had in the class, we kind of had dissimilar things. In some cases, we're checking a flag. In other cases, we're checking uh, or maybe two flags, one for east-west, one for north-south. Or, you know, we had one for counter. And so we had all these if, else, if, else, if. Well, um, in this case, we're just checking a button press. And so you can actually put a switch inside each case. And so you'll see... In this example, at line 254, I start as a switch inside the case. So the case starts at 253, line 253. The case ends at line 272. And then I have a switch inside of it. The switch starts at line 254 and ends at line 271. And what I do is I say case. Okay, the case of the button power, button down, button zero. Now, notice what I've done here. I've used a, uh, a feature of C, which is... Um, in a case statement, if you if you don't say break, it'll just fall. It'll just keep kind of heading down toward the end. And so what this structure says is that if you press button power or button down or button zero, they're all going to do the same thing. Now notice in the table, I've got them in the exact order they are in the table. And notice that how we set fan state and how we set um, uh, you know the last on state is all the same. So, um, any rate, so you see how that is the three collapse into one. And then when you look at line 263 and 264, what you see is 
um, you know, pressing button up. If you're in low, pressing button up will get to medium. Pressing two will get to medium. Well, those do the same thing. So I'm going to say button up there at line 263 and button two at 264. Those both set the fan state to medium. And likewise, or then at uh, line 268, well, pushing to three is the only way to get to high from here. All right. So um, at uh, and then. At line 274, what we see is that now we've got the case for medium. So you're, you've come into the state machine, you're in the medium speed state, and you have another uh, nested switch statement, and it corresponds exactly to the diagram there. So what you see at line 277 is button power. So if you're in medium speed, you hit the power, you turn off. If you hit the zero, you turn off. But in both cases, you set the last on state to medium. And then uh, if uh, with button down, if you're in medium, you're going to go to low. If you hit the one, you're going to go to low. So those are the same. And finally, if you're in uh, button the medium speed and you hit button three, you'll go to high. But also if you hit the button up, you'll go to high. See that? See how beautifully you know these correlate exactly these are exactly one to one the, the diagram and the code are one to one and that's what we want I know there's logically equivalent ways to do it but this is the way that's most readable and certainly in a life critical environment this is the way this is the right way to do it now likewise with the high code you'll see exactly the same logic so at line 295, I say, okay, here's what we do if, if the, the fan state is high. We have a nested switch statement at 296, and that goes through 312, line 312. And again, if you're in high and you push the power, or if you're in high and you push zero, in both cases, it's going to go to fan off, and in both cases, it's going to say last on state was high. If you're in high and you press a 1, it's just going to jump to low. If you're in high and you press either down or a two, you're going to go to medium. It's going to go down one. Yeah, see that? Okay. And then finally, coming back here, uh, what we want to do is if you're unknown, what we do is we set the fan state and we set the last on state. And then that ends up the outer switch statement, and then we have the return, return the fan state. So notice the fan state is not a global variable, but it's, this function just returns the value, you know, at, at the end. All right, now I want to go back and repeat something. I said something very important, and this is one I hope people forget, okay? Uh, looking there at the beginning of this function, updating fan status, Okay, see there in red at line 226 and 227, you gotta say static. It's not gonna work if you don't say static because otherwise those variables are on the stack and they only exist while the function's executing. You say static and it makes them persist. And the other thing is this is where we initialize everything where we say, okay, the fan is off and the last on state is low and that's the box in blue. So highlighting line 226, I know I'm repeating myself. It's very deliberate, but this is something you got to do. All right. And then in terms of our loop, here is an example. Now this is uh, as shown as part of the, the struct code for the next lecture. The next lecture is going to be putting it all together, take all these last seven or eight lectures and you know now do it but what we have here is um, at line 361 we have a local variable in loop and I'm calling it requested fan status and so you see at 363 what we do is we call a function that that waits for an IR button press so it just waits until someone pushes the button and then it has the button value and then at 364 we pass that button value to the function we just looked at and then it returns the state and then we use that state to pass the drive motor and drive motor will set the motor and the seven segment display according to that state so you see we've sort of decoupled the function at 364 determines the state the function at 365 consumes the state just like we've been doing all semester that's a very very clean way to do it at any rate so hopefully that helps um, uh, I think that's a good way to do it and uh, as always, thanks for listening. If you're not in the class and just listening, well, then definitely thanks for listening. Hey, and for your case, you know, if you want to see more videos on, well, I mean, most of my videos are on leading engineers, 
Now I'm teaching at Biola, so I've also got some on Arduino, which relates to the class I'm teaching. And go to TomAldridgeConsulting.com. You'll see, you know, you can get to all the all the videos. You can get the other material, or recommended books, especially on leadership. And then if you're on YouTube, you can search on Dr. Tom Ulrich. Uh, I keep hoping that Engineering Leadership Guy gets gets you to me. It doesn't quite yet, but I think the more and more people watch, I think uh, that will um, become more and more of a reality. At any rate, um, hey, you know, if you have a comment, leave a comment. I'll respond. And if you don't mind subscribing, that helps me out too. At any rate, take it easy. Stay safe from this crazy uh, COVID-19 situation. And let's all pray that everybody can get a shirt as just really fashionable as mine. Talk to you later.